facts you never knew about our moon. Hey everyone, it's Alexa and welcome back to another video. You see it every night, right? But how much do you actually know about our neighbor in space? For something so familiar, you might be surprised to hear these facts we've learned about our moon. But before we get into today's video, make sure that you're subscribed and ring the bell so that you never miss any of our upcoming videos. 14. A full Earth We're going to go ahead and kick this off with a fact about our very own planet because we humans are selfish creatures. Did you know that even when you're standing on the near side of the moon, you can't always see the entire Earth? This is because as we see the moon go through phases from here on our planet, we, from the moon's point of view, go through phases as well. What's crazy is that our phases are opposite that of the moon. So when we're seeing a new moon, potential moon critters are seeing a full Earth. 13. A giant blueberry. All right, all right, we're going to talk about ourselves a little bit more. From the moon, the Earth looks around four times bigger than a full moon looks to us, and that big size difference comes with a pretty significant light difference as well. When our atmosphere is in decent shape, the Earth shines bright and bathes the moon in calming blue light. For real though, it does. We shine 45 to 100 times brighter than our neighbor, depending on the condition of our atmosphere. So when there's a full Earth, the near side of the moon is illuminated by a bluish gray glow. 12. One-sided. All right, did you know that the moon only ever shows us one of its sides? We don't actually see only 50% of our little satellite, though. We can see 59% if we watch it over the course of its entire orbit. We get to see little bits and pieces at the east and west sides throughout its revolution, and this is because its rate of revolution isn't uniform, but its rate of rotation is. This allows us to peek over either edge at different times throughout the month and gives us a glimpse into nearly unseen seen worlds. While its two motions aren't always wholly in step, it all comes out even in the end. There is a whole 41% of the moon that we never see here on Earth. That means that if anyone's living on that 41%, they've never seen us either. 11. Ain't no sun. You know the moon is pretty bright, the Earth is brighter, and the sun, well, the sun is eye-meltingly bright. So how bright is the moon in comparison to the sun? The fullest full moon you can get shines at a negative 12.7 magnitude. The sun is precisely 14 magnitudes brighter than that at negative 26.7. That doesn't sound like much, right? Well, consider this though. The difference in brightness between the two is 398,100 110 to 1, meaning it would take the combined light of nearly 400,000 moons to equal the intensity of the sun, which is pretty intense when you consider how bright it is during a full moon. Did you know that that's not even possible? In our sky, we could fit a little over 200,000 full moons, which leaves us around 200,000 short of matching the brightness of the sun. That's pretty crazy. 10. Speaking of brightness. So obviously the brightness of the moon changes as it makes its way through its different phases as more or less light is reflected towards us at different times throughout the month. And although it's pretty apparent by now, we figured we'd probably mention that it is at its brightest when it's full. That very same moon is 11 times less bright during the first quarter than it is when it's full and gives off even less light in the last quarter. The reason is that the moon's surface isn't smooth at all and many shadows are cast on the surface by boulders, pebbles, craters, and mountains. 9. A little more brightness. Do you know those times where the moon is getting close to full or just was and you probably wouldn't be able to tell one way or the other? During those times, around two and a half days before and after that full moon, the light shining at us is only half as strong as it is when it's full. For real. At those times, it's 95% illuminated, but the power of the light it gives off is literally half of what it is when the moon is full. That's a whole 0.7 magnitudes less, and we can hardly even tell. 8. All kinds of options. So the moon's months are counted in a few different ways, but all of them end up around the same amount of time, all except the one we decided to use the most. There's nautical, which measures a month at 27 days, 5 hours, 5 minutes, and 35.9 seconds. 
There's Sidereal, which clocks a month at 27 days, 7 hours, 43 minutes, and 11.5 seconds. There's also Tropical, but that's about 6-ish seconds from being the same as Sidereal. Then there's Anomalistic, which calls a moon month 27 days, 13 hours, 18 minutes, and 37.4 seconds. The one we use is called Synodical, and it's probably used the most because it makes the most sense. A Synodical moon month is 29 days, 12 hours, 40 four minutes and 2.7 seconds long and it starts over every new moon making it easy to measure. 7. Eclipses we're going to get all human again and bring Earth back into this. Did you know that when we're experiencing a magnificent lunar eclipse here on good old planet Earth, the moon is experiencing a solar eclipse? That's because we are in between the sun and the moon at that time, and we block the sun's rays from reaching the lunar surface. If it's a total eclipse, all of the sunlight the moon can see is a slight, narrow ring of it, outlining a disk-like Earth as it backlights our atmosphere. What's cool is that all the sunrises and all the sunsets happening on Earth at that time combine to give that sliver of light a coppery color. This is why the moon appears almost coppery during a total lunar eclipse, because that's the color of the only sunlight getting to it. Interesting stuff. 6. A smidge more on eclipses. We just got an idea of what is happening when a lunar eclipse goes down, but what about what's going on when a solar eclipse is taking place here on Earth? Well, obviously, if you were able to deduce from the last section, the moon and the Earth are flipped and the moon blocks sunlight from our planet. The big difference is in the size of the two celestial bodies. The Earth is able to entirely block out the sun from the moon, whereas the moon can only partially block the sun from a portion of Earth at a given time. What does that look like from our little satellite? Well, it looks like a distinct little patch of darkness working its way across our home over several hours as the moon creates a shadow just a few hundred miles wide. 5. Pack all the clothes If you were going to go on a little jaunt to the moon, we'd suggest that you bring clothes ranging from flip-flops and tank tops to snowsuits and hand warmers. This is because our moon experiences extreme temperature fluctuations that would make any living creature on Earth extremely uncomfortable or extremely dead. During the day at the equator, the temperature can climb as high as 260 degrees Fahrenheit, and at the same spot at night can measure as low as minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Around the moon's poles in some of the deeper craters strewn about, the temperature stays right around minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and we thought the fluctuations in the U.S. southwestern deserts were bad. 5. Swiss Cheese we're sure you probably know why the moon appears as pockmarked and cratered as it does. Because it is. This is because between 4.1 and 3.8 billion years ago, the moon became the target of an asteroid pummeling so intense that its face was rearranged and changed forever. The Earth underwent something very similar, but we'll try to stay humble here and keep talking about the moon. Anyway, the crater evidence of this barrage of space rocks can still be seen on our satellite surface. But why? It's because it has no atmosphere, so there are no eroding agents to help them fade away. It's also because there's very little tectonic activity up there. So unlike Earth, which experiences things like volcanoes, earthquakes, and landslides, there's not much happening to destroy and reshape the landscape. So there it sits, high in the sky, our little comforting nighttime companion, a big floating ball of cheese. Four, naming fun. Did you know that the moon's craters are named according to rules? That's right, people don't just look at the craters and name them whatever comes to mind, but instead name them for all kinds of scholars, scientists, artists, explorers, and astronomers. There's an Archimedes crater, which is named after Archimedes, the Greek mathematician. There's a Copernicus crater, obviously named for Nicholas Copernicus, the Polish astronomer, and a Picard crater for Jean Picard, the French astronomer. There are also craters dedicated to something totally different. Those craters around Maro Moscoviense and the Apollo crater will be named for deceased Russian cosmonauts and the American astronauts. How cool would it be to have a moon crater? 3. An epic creation Maybe now is a good time to talk about how the moon itself was created. As of now, the accepted and most believed theory as to how the moon was formed is the Thea impact. 
It's also known as the giant impact hypothesis, the big splash, or the big whack. The theory suggests that around four and a half billion years ago, a Mars-sized object called Thea collided with Earth, which did some major damage to both bodies. It's currently believed that it was a direct impact, and the result was an extensive mixing of both parent planets. There's a lot of evidence to back that theory, including the similarities between our Earth's spin and the Moon's orbit, the Moon's small iron core and the fact that the surface was once molten. It's a pretty epic way to start, you know, as a product of the cataclysmic collision between two planets. Whoa. Two, Wilson. Picture what happens to the volleyball named Wilson in the Tom Hanks movie Castaway. That's basically what's slowly happening to our moon over time. It uses just a little bit of Earth's rotational energy every year and scoots itself roughly 3.8 centimeters higher up in its orbit. That doesn't sound like much, right? It kind of starts to when you consider that scientists believe the moon formed at just about 14,000 miles from us, and now it's roughly 239,000 miles away. Those centimeters really add up. We've learned a lot about the moon so far and we still have one more fun fact to go. But first, I'd like to ask, what's the craziest thing you've ever heard about our moon? Let me know in the comments below. 1. It's been a while. Did you know that it's been nearly 47 years since humans have set foot on the moon? We haven't been there since December 14, 1972 during the Apollo 17 mission. Well, the good news is that NASA has plans to land more humans on the moon soon, in five years, in 2024. The Artemis program is to land the first woman and the next man on our neighbor's South Pole region. The landing is also said to be the first step in a goal to create a more sustainable, long-term presence on this space rock. And that would be just another milestone on our journey into the future. Wow.